Hi everybody, this is Blossom. How are you? I hope you are all well and that you had lovely holiday celebrations. And as you see, today I have another video for you. This is more of an additional video from the last OM video. And um, yeah, as you know, sometimes I, I make a video about how you can use the plant or the tree in your magical workings. And well, this time it is about the elder together with other plants and trees as well. But my main focus is the elder in this case. And the elder tree, um, there, there is much more, there is much lore and legend around this tree. And um, if you haven't seen the, uh, the OM video about the elder and you want to know more about this tree, you can head over. I will put the link in the description box, but only if you're interested, of course. Yeah, and so here I would like to share with you how you can use this tree to connect with the Fae. So for myself, during uh, the lighter half of the year, during spring and summer and even still in, in autumn, it is actually no problem for me to connect with the fairies. And, uh, but now in winter, I have to admit, because it is a bit difficult so because you know um, you're not at outside a lot I spend much more time inside and I go out every day because I have dogs and I have to walk them <laughs> walk with them <laughs> and uh, yeah so I am outside every day but I'm very happy to be inside again because especially here I see all the beautiful snow pictures all around but we had snow for two days and since then it is raining non-stop and it's just wet and uncomfortable <laughs> so when you don't spend a lot of time outside I personally for me personally I feel that the connection gets weaker with the fairies I still work with them but I just you know, I just feel like I wouldn't be as close to them as usual. And of course I get that every winter and that's why I ask myself everywhere, every year, <laughs> how can I bring the fairy energy into my house and as I work the rest of the year in my garden and gather herbs and plants, uh, I just need, you know, I, I gather them, I dry them, I bring them in. So I just need to mix them together and yeah, I can create an incense uh, which is just a start to connect with the fairies. And as always, I know I repeat myself a lot, but I just, um, before I tell you which ingredients, which <laughs> plants and, and trees I use for this incense mix, I really want you to know how, impo how important it is to be always respectful towards the trees and plants and it is never bad to ask their permission or to even talk to them and tell them, uh, here listen, I want to use your leaves, your berries, your flowers, whatever, to make an incense mix in this case and to deepen my connection with fairy the other or the other world or whatever you like to do so it really depends on where you're coming from so if that is something that is that feels weird for you just ignore it just talk to it you know and after a while you, you don't feel weird anymore <laughs> and i'm sure that others who watch this video are completely fine with it and used to it already and also when you take something it is not a bad idea to leave an offering so you could if you if you take the flowers or the berries or the leaves you could um, leave an offering of milk or honey or a song or uh, maybe even moon water I do that for example um, for my birch and my willow tree as they are so connected to the moon I always offer them moon water so now <laughs> I will share what I have 
in my special incense mix. What I have is elderflowers and then blackberry leaves, hawthorn berries, heather flowers, thyme and rosemary. That is everything that comes in my mix. And that's in here. Don't have enough this year. <laughs> and I use already a little bit. Um, so that's in there. So that is my personal mix. And you can add something or you can leave something out. If you think it's not uh, necessary to have that in. You can, you know, I really encourage you to experiment with your own mix. But I also know that sometimes people don't really know what to, to put, what to mix together. So I will explain shortly why I have those things in. So the first thing, of course, is the elderflowers. As we are talking about the elderflowers, I will just show you here how they look when dry. Uh, yeah, there. Yeah. So I purchased those. I rarely do that, but I didn't have enough elderflowers this year. And I am very picky where I purchase those things. Uh, I have to meet the people who, who sell it personally. I don't buy online or anything. I'm not saying that's wrong, but it's just something for me. I, I, I really need to meet a person. <laughs> Because I am so used to um, to collect it myself or to even grow it myself in the garden. So I use the elderflowers as they have a very strong connection to the fairies. And it is also said if you use elderflower water and you anoint your eyelids with it, you can see fairies. To do that, just let the flower soak into the water and charge it under the full moon. It is also said when you make whistles out of the wood from an elder tree, you can use it to call the fairies. And when you burn the flowers in the Midsummer's Eve bonfire, again, you can see the fairies. So this is really like the main uh, ingredient for this mix. Then I also use blackberry leaves. Uh, they are very grounding and they are also very protective and you can use the berries and the leaves for many magical pur purposes. This is not only, you know, a fairy thing. For example, binding, banishing and many spells. But the reason why I chose this plant for my incense mix is because it also has a connection to the fae and it is still able to help me to ground and center when I work with fairy. It helps me to see how everything is interconnected and um, it protects also against evil energies. Even if I'm not a huge fan to make fairies more evil than they are, I still think it's important to create boundaries as soon as you invite fairies into your home. You have to find a middle path in fairy. They are not all fluffy and cute, but neither are they evil or malevolent as certain, you know, as we see in folklore, because a lot what we read there is often, you know, just a bit too much. So don't don't get me wrong here, I really enjoy to use folklore as a research tool to learn more about the Fae, but it is also important not to forget when all of this was written, and this was often between the 16th and 18th century, and um, yeah, at this time Christianity ruled in the Celtic lands. But I, you know, that's for more about that at another time. Then I also have hawthorn berries in it and hawthorn is a well-known fairy tree and to this day it is still considered bad luck if you cut down a solitary hawthorn tree and people are scared of, of the fairy's outrage. So for this reason I would suggest to gather the leaves or berries only from a hawthorn hedge um, and in my own experience the hedges are very cooperative and I have a beautiful beautiful hawthorn hedge uh, near um, a sacred spring where I go more often and that's just a very generous hawthorn hedge and I really yeah and that's where the hawthorn berries from here can you see them just a few 
whoops, sorry. There you go. Um, yeah, where they are from. Also, when you burn the dried berries as an incense, incense, it can encourage more vitality in your life and it can build up your courage. And yes, you may need that in order to work with the fairies and it brings more clarity and insight. And I think for that reason it is a very good uh, addition to this mix. Then another plant, the next plant that I have in is the heather. And when you burn heather as an incense, again it brings clarity and uh, awareness and it also develops or strengthens your psychic abilities. Heather is also helpful to connect with your spirit guide. It is also said that it opens the portal to fairy. And I think for me personally, Heather, Heather, Heather is a very gentle and healing plant. So there's more to say about Heather, but for this reason, you know, that opening the portal and strength, strengthening of your psychic abilities is um, really nice. Then I also have time in it. And this, of course, again, has a very strong connection to fairies. And if you want to attract them to your garden, you just have to plant th uh, thyme around your house. And if you invite the, the fairies into your home, you just need to sprinkle some thyme on your doorstep. And it is also a purifier and energizer. And then the last thing is rosemary. And I add rosemary in nearly every incense mix that I make. Uh, it is a strong protector and cleanser and purifier and it also increases magical and psychic powers. Again, it attracts the fairies and keeps the evil spirits away. So I think I have a wonderful mix here. <laughs> but that's just me thinking that. <laughs> so let's move on. So now you have your incense mix, you know a bit about the ingredients. And I'm sure now you want to know how to connect with the fairies. And there I say, really prepare a sacred space. And this can be your altar, like this one, something like that. Um, for me personally, I know there are books out there who say how to set up a fairy altar. But a fairy altar for me personally is always there are no rules, do whatever you want. <laughs> In general, I have to admit. And if you don't have an altar, just a place where you feel safe and comfortable. And you, you know, you make it sacred just with intention. If you really want, just want to say, um, this is my sacred space now, or you know, you can keep it really, really simple. So, and then before you start, um, if you like, you can get a piece of paper and a pen and draw the fairy star or also called the elven star. So I have, this is my image for the fairy star. I did that now a few days ago because it's actually a tattoo idea. <laughs> know that it doesn't have to be that detailed. You can just, you know, look it up how you draw that. I just enjoy doing this thing, so, but you don't have to. But when you draw a fairy star, do it yourself um, rather than just to print it out, you know. It doesn't have to be perfect, but, you know, this one isn't, so that's completely okay. And um, this seven-pointed star is used, is used to represent the seven elements or seven directions like air, fire, water, earth, upper world, underworld and spirit. Or it represents north, east, south, west, above, below and within. And the star is your entry point to the fairy realm. There are still different takes on the fairy star, but again, I will talk or write about that at a later point if somebody is interested in it. And then again, you can leave a little offering. Um, at your at your sacred space uh, you can use milk honey cake wine or a song again it uh, really it, it doesn't matter just um, some form that you uh, some yeah something that you appreciate it and that you are thankful and if you like you can also lit some candles to set the mood 
I have it now brighter just because of the camera <laughs> and you can also listen to music and then just you know calm down for a moment just try to calming down the chatter in your mind <laughs> just breathe in deep and breathe out and breathe in and out and when you are in a relaxed state of mind you can burn the incense and set the intention that you want to connect with the fairies so let's burn some incense now i actually prefer to burn the incense on charcoal like here but um, i am in a smaller room today and uh yeah so i do it differently so i don't know if it's already hot enough we shall see and i don't use much as i say i would normally burn it on the other one but we will see and then you just let the incense burn and then it, it really doesn't matter if you leave your eyes open or closed Whatever feels good for you is right. You can call upon them out loud or with your inner voice. And in order to connect with fairy, open your heart fully and greet the fae with joy and purity. Again, I am not a fan of making them just all sweet, but definitely the fairies are beings who prefer a joyful heart and not when you are all miserable and complaining and just ask them to help them to make your life better they will probably not appear so call upon the fairies when you are in a good mood and um, when you can really truly uh, feel the joy in your heart you can also th sing a chant to welcome them uh, here's one that I wrote you can use it or you make something up on your own. I'm not the best rhymer or anything. But mine is as following. Good folk, shining ones, I call thee. Feel welcome to enter in our home. Let our friendship grow in purity and guide me through a land unknown. Everything we do will be magical. Let's create together something fantastical. So you can sing that or chant that. <laughs> or just say it out loud and also something I like to use is a method by RJ Stewart he suggests to go at the crossroads in your mind's eye so imagine that you are at a crossroad become aware of the four directions north, east, south and west the direction behind you flows through you and the direction in front of you comes to you the other directions support you and keep you upright and then just open your heart and your mind to everything that may come your way don't judge what you may feel see or hear but just give in into the experience and if you can't feel any present presence don't stress yourself over it that's all right just keep doing it do it another day do it a few hours later it is quite normal if you try this for the first time that not that, that there may not necessarily be immediately a response you know it could also be possible you know when you have the music and you set the mood with candlelight so that at some point you feel like you want to move and that you want to that you may feel like dancing or singing then just do it that could indicate a fairy presence um, as I say, they are very joyful and they want us to be free in our behavior. You don't have to sit straight, you know, like often in, in meditation techniques that you have to straight, straight and that you need a certain hand position or anything. That is not what fairy is about. So feel free to move around if you have the urge to do so. And then whenever you feel it's enough, then thank the fairies, even if you couldn't feel their presence or even if you think nothing happened um, some people say never to say thank you to the fake I personally don't think that is necessarily true but I also have to admit that I mostly uh, say that I appreciate their help and I leave them an offering 
because I could I could understand you know if you just say thank you that is just kind of a empty it's just like an empty saying maybe for them others say that you may be in their depth and however <laughs> do whatever you think is right and then if you keep some kind of journal you can of course write down your experiences before you go back to your daily routine you could also use the incense to do water scrying because everything what is in that mix works as water magic as well and I, I really do like when I do scry with a water bowl I really like when um, there are herbs in it I don't know I just like that maybe some will say that it's not possible but it works for me and I love just watching watching it <laughs> it's really nice and then you can also add of course stones or crystals let me show you I have here hex stones that I found so this is really fairy for me as there is a saying when you look through it you will see fairy I have three a very tiny one with a very tiny hole but it goes through and then the other one here so I use those but, uh, yeah that that you could use as well yeah and this incense mix and with this you know with this approach just to sit there and really take it all in you could also use a crystal ball you know just to see or just when the, I don't know what's working wrong today <laughs> it's just not working but I have a different incense mix I have to admit that I took another one just because I don't want to waste that one for a video I'm sorry but you know I don't have that much left and um, so you could just watch the smoke rising up or gazing into a crystal ball or I don't know scrying in general whatever you you do and then as I say if you use that that little chant with good folk shiny ones I call the feel welcome to enter our home let our friendships grow in purity and guide me through a land unknown. So maybe this helps you already to, to get a certain connection to them. Uh, please know that this is not the only way to connect with the Fae. There are so many ways to do that and I have various methods myself to connect with them. And I use the different ways according to what feels right at the time, according to weather, of course. And I would say just try it and see for yourself if this method works for you. I will, if there, if somebody is interested, I also have um, a meditation to connect with the fairies. It's, I have it, it's been ready for I guess honestly I think two months but I haven't uploaded it because I'm not really sure I sometimes feels there is not enough interest for those things so please let me know if you are interested I'm happy to load it up it's a it's a nice little meditation to connect with the faith and you could do this meditation then as well with which is burning some incense that would work <laughs> and I zoom into the fairy now <laughs> so you can have something on your sacred space as well uh, again it's kind of cute very cute and not everybody likes that but I just love those little figurines and my house is full of it <laughs> and there is still so much to say about fairy and I'm a bit unorganized but I thought I'd start with something and as the elder tree it was an opportunity now to do that very connection spell or whatever. I will also have a blog post up, I will link that below as well, where you can read again about the plants and where you have it all written, if you prefer that. Um, thank you so much for watching. I send you much, much love and blessings and also a happy new year. So thanks again and bye bye.